or tax is the lifeblood of democracy. Simple as that. You cannot run a democratic state without tax. We pay tax, we get annoyed, we hold governments to account. That's why democracies work. Without that, things start to fall apart. Whatever their age, whatever their gender, whatever their profession, whatever their background, whatever their class, everybody cares about fair taxation. <laughs> In far too many countries around the world, we see that tax policies are being shaped by very powerful lobbies acting on behalf of the rich and the, the powerful companies. The key players in the tax haven world are the most powerful countries in the world, politically powerful and economically powerful, and that includes the United States, it includes Germany, it includes the United Kingdom. Well, the traditional view of tax havens is as either Switzerland or sunny islands in the Caribbean. Um, but the reality is that um, they are, those pla places are important, but um, the, the offshore central, as I see it, the most important jurisdiction is here in London, um, United Kingdom. Uh, the United Kingdom runs a network of tax havens around the world. Um, the British Virgin Islands, the Cayman Islands, Jersey, all these huge tax havens are very substantially British. Um, Britain has a substantial measure of control over what happens there. The Queen's head is on, on their stamps. The ability of multinational companies to have subsidiaries in many different countries, including in tax havens, creates the opportunity for multinational companies to shift a lot of profits to those jurisdictions. As you know, whatever can be priced can also be mispriced. So as a result, a lot of income that would normally be recognized in developing countries ends up being recognized in the tax havens where the multinational companies have their subsidiaries. It's the sheer unfairness that if you're very rich or if you're a multinational corporation, you don't pay tax automatically as the rest of us do, but it's almost become a voluntary activity. You choose to pay. You don't pay based on your income or based on the profits you make. And that just is felt to be deeply unfair. I think that the American people are tired of seeing large corporations break the law and then negotiate sweetheart deals behind closed doors. The G20 reacting to the financial crisis has had to respond to this because public, um, public awareness of the issue has risen to such a point there's a huge public anger in most countries, so they have to take action. You know, TJN have changed the world in a way that just didn't look possible when they started. Uh, Chinese elites have used the, the very deep secrecy of the British Virgin Islands to hide their illicit financial movements offshore. The research agenda for the Tax Justice Network really now is about digging down below these global priorities to say what would be the specific priorities for an individual country in a particular context. You know, Zambia faces different challenges from Brazil, which faces different challenges from France. The main hope that developing countries have to come out of the economic deprivation, the poverty, the lack of human rights, is to attract technology, attract investments, and to make decisions that are important for their economies. But if in the process of doing so, developing countries have to give up their fiscal sovereignty, have to give tax concessions to multinational companies to locate there, have to agree to coercive provisions in tax treaties, then it is not fair to the developing countries. And that's why tax justice matters. In the UK and Europe uh, especially, we've been facing years of austerity politics. We've seen our public services cut, uh, and all because, uh, as they repeatedly tell us, there is no money. But clearly, it's just that companies are choosing not to pay tax, uh, and governments are not doing enough to collect it.
The next big threat comes from tax wars, that is the political pressure to compete on tax and regulation. The risk here is a race, global race to the bottom, which will simply destroy democracy. Civil society has got to keep arguing the case for more transparency so we really see where people make their money and where they pay their taxes. Because we don't like paying tax, when we pay it, we're more likely to hold governments to account. And that process over time is what makes states function.